certified tea etiquette consultant in April of 2001. She was certified by the Protocol School of Washington, and that means that she is able to speak on many different aspects of tea, um, including children's teas, presidential teas like today, mother-daughter teas, and tea etiquette in general. Um, she can speak about growing herbs and harvesting them to make tea infusions, and she also does fairy teas for the young and the young at heart. Um, and I don't know if you saw in the back there when you found your refreshments, um, Pat actually brought in some of her own tea in her um, is it hall teapots back there, um, and also some molasses and lavender cookies that she made for us today, so very special. Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Pat Sagart. Thank you. One thing I have to say is you'll have to excuse me because I don't do often of this presidential tea, so I have to look at my notes once in a while. <laughs> but I am certified, and I do a lot of uh, etiquette teas for the children, which is a lot of fun. In fact, when I, I did it for a brownie group one time, and they told them that they could not blow their nose in a napkin, and their mouths just dropped. Well, I did that. I didn't know I couldn't do that. It was really funny, really funny. Okay, I am married. I have four daughters. Three are married, and I have four grandchildren. And my daughters all drink tea. My grandchildren drink tea. And it's really, really healthy for you. Um, I haven't had a cup of coffee in about 17 years. All I do is drink tea. Yes. And I'm on no medication. I'm, I hope I'm really healthy. <laughs> so, Okay, the history of tea goes back over a thousands of years ago before Christ. There was a man at the time, an emperor, and his name was Emperor Shenum. And he said that if you drink warm water, you were less likely to become ill. So all the time he used to work in his garden, he had a bowl of warm water at his side. And one day, a leaf from the Camellia sensinus bush fell into this bowl. And the aroma that was coming from this bowl tempted him to try it. And of course, he liked it better than his plain old water. So all your tea comes from the Camellia sensinus bush. It's the way the tea leaves are handled after they're picked. To get your green tea, the leaves are steamed. To get your black tea, the, teas are, the tea leaves are rolled and then they are fired and then they go into fermentation. And to get your oolong teas, what they serve at oriental restaurants, there it's, the leaves are handled the same way as your black teas, but the fermentation is cut in half. Okay? We'll go way back to uh, our first president, who was George Washington. He was uh, a big man. He was 6'2", and before he ever became president, he always drank tea. In the morning, he had three cups of black tea with his whole cakes. And whole cakes are like biscuits, but they're made with cornmeal. And he used to smother these whole cakes with butter and honey. And he used to have the three cups of black tea. He had slaves at the time, and he made sure that the slaves also had tea to drink. They, he would go into their kitchen. They had hardly any furniture in the kitchen, but they always had a pot of water on the stove for a cup of tea. Uh, Washington only had an eighth grade education, and he was a rich man. In fact, he turned down the presidential salary, which was $25,000 at the time. So you can see how, how uh, Inflation has gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next president that I enjoy most is um, President Lincoln. His wife was Mary Todd, and I have a picture of her. 
her here. Afterwards, if you like, you could come over and look at all my stuff that I have collected through the years. Uh, Lincoln was uh, born in a log cabin, and he was uh, loved to read. He never belonged to a church, but he always read the Bible. Okay? Lincoln was a, a tea drinker also way before he became president. So it seems like they all loved their tea. And when Mary uh, Todd got into the White House, she ordered uh, a gourmet a dishes that uh, had a full tea set. And the dishes and the cups had an eagle on it that was like flying through the sky with the sun bursting out on the eagle. Uh, they still have those uh, cups and the dishes at the White House. Okay? I have a picture here that I got, uh, if everybody's been to the Dearborn uh, Historical Museum there, they have the chair in which Lincoln was shot. <coughs> okay. Then we will go to um, another president, which I uh, always enjoyed, was um, President Roosevelt. His wife was Edith. He was born in New York City, and he was born to, uh, uh, with, uh, from a rich family. He loved to add to his black tea a lemon and mint leaves and just a pinch of sugar. Mrs. Uh, Roosevelt frequently entertained at the White House with tea, and she would get letters from women asking to be invited to these teas. And later on, they would announce it in the newspaper about how the tea went and everything, and people would just buy the news newspaper just to catch up on all the gossip <laughs> <laughs> that was going on. Okay? Then we have our President Garfield, who was the last president to be born in 1831 in a log cabin. She took up her uh, duties as a first lady and included a lot of teas uh, in, at the White House. Her daughters also loved to have teas. Okay, one, uh, one day she uh, decided that she wanted to uh, uh, embroidery uh, a tea cozy in her spare time and this is a picture of the cozy, and it's got elaborate, elaborate lot of work. That was in 1881. Okay. Then we have, um, let me see here. Uh, we have uh, President Eisenhower, and uh, Mamie was the wife. She was... Um, uh, entertained a lot for teas. In fact, when she would have a tea at the White House, she made sure the guests would receive a tour of the White House. And in 1960, she gave her last tea at the White House to uh, her sister's daughter. It was a debutante party, and there were 500 guests invited and they had tea in the green room. Okay? Then we have our uh, President John F. Kennedy, and his wife was Jacqueline. And long before he became president, his mother was sipping tea with Sir Thomas Lipton. <laughs> And uh, one of the tea party, uh, the tea party was one of John F. Kennedy's favorite and most effective campaign device. 
The Kennedy children had an English nanny, and they always had tea in the garden. And this is uh, Caroline and John Kennedy having tea. So you can see how uh, the pr effect, the tea with the presidents. Uh, then we have the Johnson family. Lady Bird was the wife of uh, Johnson Linden, and she always had a cup of tea at hand. Her daughters shared her fondness for the tea also. In 1967, the Johnson invited the former presidents and their wives to the White House to have a cup of tea and discuss how their life was at the White House. And they really had a, it was said they had a really a good, good time. Okay. And um, President Nixon, his wife was Patricia. There were numerous references in the files of the Nixon administration that they had tea parties. And whenever she had a tea party, Mr. Uh, Nixon requested that all the names be recorded in a book who attended these tea parties. They went to China and they received a Yixing teapot. This is made from clay from certain parts of China. You do not put this in uh, water, or soap and water. You only rinse it out with water and you use the same teapot for the same tea always. Like if you're going to make a black tea, you use it for black tea. If you're making green tea, you only use it for, to make green tea. And after a couple years of use, you don't even have to use a tea bag anymore. <laughs> the, it absorbs. The, that's why you don't wash it with soap and water. And I have a collection of these at home. My son-in-law used to go to China for uh, his company. And he always would bring me home uh, a Yixing teapot. So I have a collection of these. But when um, they went to China, the Nixons, they bought a whole set for, of this Yixing with the cups and saucers for their daughter when she got married. Okay. Then I have the Fords. They were extremely uh, entertaining with teas. They loved to have their teas. The Fords received several silver tea sets from the diplomats that were coming to visit them. And whenever the, uh, diplomats came from other countries to visit them, what would they give that president was a tea set. So they had quite a collection of it. And the Fords received a tea set from Romania, Egypt, and Indonesia. And Mr. Ford used to always kind of make his own breakfast. And what he had with his breakfast was a cup of black tea, a muffin, and a half a grapefruit. That was his breakfast. Then there were the Carters. Jimmy Carter graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy. He served in the Navy, and when his father died, he came home to take over the business. President uh, Carter, they entertained a lot with the tea. In fact, Mr. Sadat was at the tea in the White House garden with the Nixons. He also had uh, it recorded that when she ever gave a tea party that the names of the people be recorded who attended a tea party, okay? She, Mrs. Nix, Mrs. Carter was strongly was interested into arts and a lot of times when she did have a tea party, 
she would have musicians play at this tea party. Then we have the Reagans. And I have a picture here where uh, the Reagans were with Princess Diane and um, Prince Charles. They were having tea in the yellow room. They were very um, good about having the tea. Uh, they always would um, invite uh, the people from other states to have tea, and uh, they always enjoy their tea. They love the black tea especially, and they put a pinch of honey in it. Honey, let me tell you, will bring out the flavor of uh, especially your herbal infusions or your uh, teas with the fruit, that honey will bring out the flavor more. I don't use, use sugar in my teas, I use honey. Okay, then uh, we go to George Bush, who his wife was Barbara. George Bush loved green tea. And green tea, where they made quite a few studies on, where it is supposed to be uh, healthy for you because it fights cancer cells. Now, I'm not saying it's a miracle drug, but I was at the Dearborn uh, campus in uh, Dearborn, and uh, the, we had a herbal conference, and I was a speaker, and there was a man who had um, cancer, and he said that his doctor told him to drink at least three cups of green tea a day and a glass of red wine. And he said he really enjoyed that. And his cancer, <laughs> his cancer was in remission. So I'm not saying that it's a miracle drug, but um, tea is healthier for you to drink. It has less caffeine. And if you want to decaffeinate your tea, you uh, dip your, uh, you, you wash your uh, tea leaves at least for 20 seconds. You spill that water out, and then you reuse your uh, tea leaves, and it will be decaffeinated. Because the caffeine comes out of the tea leaves at least 20 seconds once the hot water is poured over it. Okay? Like I said, George Bush was an avid uh, green tea drinker. He loved to have his tea in the afternoon, and they had quite a bit of uh, tea parties also in the green room, in the yellow room. And the funny thing about it is they had their dog, Millie, and she was invited to these tea parties also. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, Princess Margaret was at uh, the White House having tea with uh, the Nixons. Okay, then I will go to the uh, Clintons. Clintons were avid tea drinkers also. They had uh, tea with uh, Prime Minister Blair, and uh, they had given him one of these special mugs with the eagle on it, and he said that he would treasure that mug for always. And surprising enough, while they were uh, at living at the White House, their Christmas cards included uh, a teacup with a teapot on it. So that was really, uh, that really surprised me. <laughs> okay, so um, I have to tell you that the tea, like I said, goes a long way over 2,000 years ago. And the way the afternoon tea started was when the Duchess of Bedford, she used to become sluggish around 3 o'clock. They had their breakfast early, they had their lunch, and they ate their dinner later. And one time she decided to have her uh, servants bring her up a cup of tea and bread and butter. And after drinking that and relaxing a while, she kind of got revived. So she thought she would invite her friends and relatives for her new discovery, and that was the afternoon tea. And when you have a tea, you can either have an afternoon tea or a cream tea 
or a high tea. And a high tea consists of a hot, more or less, meal, okay? Or a, a cream tea is only scones with uh, uh, your tea with Devonshire cream and jam. Your afternoon tea is with the sandwiches, scones, and cookies. And everything should be bite size. And you should always cut your crust off of your bread to have uh, the tea sandwiches. Your most popular tea sandwich is a tuna, the uh, pickle, and a radish. And I also like the chicken salad uh, as a, a, a for a tea sandwich. Okay. Um, I have also this poster here with all the uh, wives up to a uh, bush. And like I say, afterwards, if you want, you could come here and look at everything. And I have pictures of uh, the Kennedys and everything. Nancy Regan once said, a woman is like a tea bag. It's only when she's in hot water that you realize how strong she is. <laughs> now, are there any questions I could answer? No? Yes, how did you get, in, how did you become interested in doing tea? I mean, it's a very lovely, unique thing. Well, the way I got interested, I used to belong, <laughs> when I lived in Warren, I live in Washington, Michigan now, but I used to live in Warren. I joined a Troy Garden herb study group. And of course, when I moved, I, uh, it was too much to come back and forth, so I didn't attend anymore. But um, when we used to have a meeting once a month, uh, we used to have a speaker come and talk about something. Or we would, if we didn't have a speaker come in, we would have to study in an herb and what we could do with this herb and how we grow it and everything like this. So one day I thought, boy, they're making vinegar from herbs, they're making the butter, they're making, you know, different things. And I was, like I said, I was a tea drinker, and I thought, well, getting all these flavors, why can't I make tea out of the, by pouring hot water over the herbs? And it's better to use the dried herbs instead of the fresh, because the fresh you have to use more, where if you use the dry, you can use less. So anyways, I began to experiment. I grew a lot of uh, mints. I grew spearmint, uh, peppermint, orange mint, whatever, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon mint, or, and I used to start experimenting making these different teas. And I thought, wow, this is great, you know? So I decided I'd go into more. So I got a lemon verbena and different, you know, I, st I started experimenting with rose geranium, uh, the scented rose geranium. And so that's how I did it. And uh, so I was telling the girls one time what I was doing, and they says, oh, wow, you're going to have to come to a meeting and talk about this. Mm -hmm. So I did, and that's how it all got started <laughs> right here in Troy. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> yes? What is Devonshire cream? It's made from um, cream cheese, sour cream, and confectionery sugar. Yeah, it's really, really good. You, you put it on your um, scone, and uh, your scone, you never cut your scone. You're supposed to just break it in bite-sized pieces. And then you put your uh, jam on it, and then your Devonshire cream. And it's really, really good. Yes? Um, I started drinking a lot of tea, and I was out with this uh, group of women. When I had my tea at home, I usually put a lot of uh, milk or cream in it. And they said, oh, you must be British, because the British drink it with a lot. It's almost white yeah. when they drink their tea. Yeah. So does that take away from the properties of the tea? I think it does. <laughs> I think it does. In fact, I was told. What you should never use cream, but only milk, because cream will curdle into the hot when you pour it into the hot tea. 
I don't know, I never tried it, but that's what I was told. But it does take away from the effects if put milk into your tea. Yes, it does. Uh huh. Uh, my parents are from Ireland, so by extension, they would have, have a lot of cream. But they would use evaporated milk. It's kind of like the poor man's cream. Yeah. And then my father would pour it into the saucer because it was hot and slurp it out of the saucer. Oh, I remember that. that was... We'd always be ragging on him. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah. When I took my classes for the etiquette of tea, I was told that was a no-no and I could be put in a hall of shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, there was a lady that, uh, the school I went to in Washington, uh, well, it wasn't really in Virginia. She ran a school called the Protocol School of Etiquette, and she ran a school uh, for, like, tea rooms, high-class restaurants and everything. Uh, and I took a class there, and she had all this information about how to run a tea room, how to uh, use your silverware, how to use your napkin, and that's, yeah. And a lot of the stuff she does teach, is, it's really a, really a good thing. Like, for instance, when you uh, pour your tea into a cup, you're only supposed to fill it like three-fourths of the way because if you fill it all the way and you bring that teacup up to you, it can, if it's full, it can spill. You know, and um, so all the things that she does teach is really, I think, great. You know, like you're never supposed to um, blow your nose in a napkin, <laughs> <laughs> and you're supposed to always keep your napkin on your lap, and when you do wipe your lips, you're supposed to just blot it with the napkin. So it's stuff like that. Yes. Tea, tea, right. So it didn't hurt. Right. Also, after all these years, I don't know if you've ever noticed the silver tea service or China tea service. There's the teapot, the water pot, the cream and sugar, and a bowl. A bowl. Uh huh. And it's the slop bowl. Right. Because if you have tea, tea leaves in your cup, and you wish another cup of tea, what do you do with that? And the hostess would pour, pour it in there. Right. And then she would pour you a fresh cup of tea. Yeah. That's another thing I had learned at the yeah. school. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, and all these creams and the biscuits, we, I still have tea about 4 o'clock. And you're right. Yeah. I get kind of tired when I'm sitting there and think, oh, I'm going to have my tea. Yeah. That I have my cup of tea just before 4. Mm -hmm. And then I sit and relax for a while, and then I have to get up, maybe start my dinner and everything. And really, you get kind of get revived, you know. And tea is healthy for you. They have been making a lot of studies in New Jersey uh, University there about how tea can, the antitoxins they have in the tea is very healthy for you. So, yes. They, they, they have the crumpets. It's more or less like a, almost like a scone. You could eat it the same way. It's, softer. <coughs> it's a little softer, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a, you could eat it the same way as a, a scone, where you break it off in bite-sized pieces. Well, you really have to toast them, but I don't know what they were like originally. Maybe they were more like a scone. Uh -huh. But they don't have any cholesterol in them. They're very reasonable. You can put different preserves on them, honey on them. You can yeah. I I don't like the crumpet. <laughs> I rather have no, a really. I rather have a scone. Well, I don't the scones. I don't like because they're very hard. Most of the 
stories Oh, I don't I don't think they're hard. Maybe I, I really haven't had any problem with the scones, really, yeah. I thought crumpets were of a yeast dough. Uh-huh. Is that not true? Uh, a yeast dough? I, mean, I don't know too much about the crumpets. Was it made from yeast dough, the crumpets? I don't know, but Hollywood has them from, from Canada, and Savaggio has them from their buttermilk. They come with buttermilk down on regular. Papa Joe's has them in Birmingham. I'll have to try them. I haven't had they one no in cholesterol. years. They have no cholesterol in them at all. Okay. Do you, do you put Devonshire cream on it? Yeah. You could. I think. <laughs> do you? Did you ever put Devonshire cream on it? No, where do you buy it? Buy the Devonshire cream? I, I make mine. Oh, you can't buy it already. You can buy it. You can buy it, but I never bought it. I, I make mine. Where do you buy it? There's a place in Berkeley called, what is that called? Christie's. Christie's, but that other one, Elwins. Elwins mm-hmm. in Berkeley sells Devonshire. Yeah, E L W I N S. They're on Coolidge in Berkeley. Has everybody, anybody been to the Mackinac Island, to the Grand Hotel for a hike? Yeah, that is nice there. What is nice about it is they have, uh, you sit in the lobby and they serve you uh, scones and sandwiches and cookies and uh, they usually have a violin or a piano or a harp player and then afterwards you're served a glass of sherry or champagne. (laughs) That's grand. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't know, my husband Treated, your- treated me, <laughs> so I don't ask. <laughs> yes? Um, recently I was on a cruise and they had tea, of course, and it was fantastic and it just tasted so, it was wonderful. And so we asked, oh, what kind of tea is this? And they said Lipton, which we were surprised. My Lipton tea at home does not turn out like that. Is there any tips for making a good cup of tea? Well, the thing of it is what they say that to have a good cup of tea, you should use a fine china cup because your tea tastes better in a fine china cup. You get your water to a boil, but not a rolling boil. Because if you do have it to a rolling boil, it takes the oxygen out of the water and it can make your tea taste bitter. So I get my, I have an electric uh, pot that when it gets to about 190, 92 degrees, it shuts off by itself. And that is perfect I, for my. And, and then the other question is, um, they had not, I don't think, did they call it Devonshire, but they call it clotted, clotted, clotted cream. cream. It's, it's about the same thing, okay. yeah. Nope, yeah. yeah. Just. What's the story on the Brown Betty teapot? Oh, they say, um, the, those brown Betty teapots <laughs> to always pour uh, hot water in it before you make your tea and uh, back then that was more or less I guess the teapot that they had Working and twice. yeah and they said that they always said it just made a fine pot of tea and your tea stayed hotter longer in that because it was a thicker uh, like ceramic type thing, but that's the only thing I know about the brown Betty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But to have your tea, I always like to warm my teapots first with hot water, while my uh, water is coming to a boil. Then I spill that water out, and then I make my tea because that way your tea will stay hot longer. Or you can always cover your teapot with a tea cozy. If you, if you pour the hot water into a cold pot, it will crack. The pot will crack. And Arthur Godfrey would always tell us to hot the pot <laughs> before you put your Well, I, I, ha- I uh, spill the hot water out, and right. then I pour my hot right. water Otherwise, in. It, It'll crack. It's yeah. the same way with any kind of a glassware. If you put hot water, boiling hot water, it will crack. Right. Yes. 
This is a funny question because when you're served tea in a tea bag, it's, I, and I have a very bad habit of after I dunk my tea bag or let it sit for a few minutes, you pick up this tea and it's you know seeping. Mm -hmm. So I have a tendency to put on my teaspoon and just wrap this. Up. I know, I know, I it's very gauche. I know it's the worst thing, but you're holding this dripping tea bag. You think, well, I guess I put it on my saucer. So you put it on the saucer and then it drips on the tablecloth. Okay. And so. So now I make sure I have these little things that you put next to your cup so you can take it out and put it. And I, I said, I know it's the worst thing you could possibly yeah. do, but if you don't well, have that, what you sort of stuff yeah. with this If bag. you are, it's not a bad thing to use a tea bag, but what you should do if you are having people over, you should have an extra plate to put the tea bag on, or you should have one of these little tea, what they call tea tidies, by each plate right. setting. To, for them to put the tea bag on. You pick up this tea tidy to your cup and then you put the tea bag on it. You're never supposed to put your tea bag on the saucer because like she says, when you pick up your tea uh, cup, it's going to have that drippings and then you know, the tea cup will be dripping. What I like to do is I like to use paper doilies on my saucer with the teacup. The reason for that is because your teaspoon, I use those little demi spoons for my fine china cups, and when you are setting the table, your teaspoon should go in back of the cup. It should never touch the table. So when I use my teaspoon to stir my tea back and forth, I put my teaspoon in the back of my cup again, and it catches just a little bit of the drippings from that teaspoon. That's why I like to use the paper doilies on the saucer. Okay. Do you ever use tea blooms? Tea what? Tea blooms. Okay. Uh, not really. No. Okay. No, I don't. The only thing is um, they have this white tea, uh, which is very expensive, and to me it has no flavor. And why it is so expensive is because it's picked in the springtime of the year, and they pick the buds of the flower. And that's why it's so expensive, because they can only pick it like in the springtime. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember when you bought that chrysanthemum bulb, and you put the whole yeah. water in it just the, yeah, the chrysanthemum. When I, I had a demonstration, she was at one of my teas before, and I had this chrysanthemum flower, and uh, they make tea from that. And once you pour that hot water over that, it's really pretty. I, I bring that when I do a lot of the children's teas because they are in like awe. That that blossom like that, that the hot water went uh, over it. Goldfish tea in Royal Oak has the tea blooms in a variety of different things. Right. The lovely. Yeah. Yes. What is your recipe for the Devonshire cream? It is, uh, I don't have the amounts, but I use uh, confectionery sugar, sour cream, and uh, sometimes whippet cream or cream cheese. But I don't have the amounts. Cream cheese, sour cream, whipped cream, and confectionery sugar. So equal amounts, cream? Equal amounts? Um, I really don't remember the, uh, the, yeah. Has anybody ever made a clotted cream or Devonshire cream? Oh, you should try it. It's really good. You can get the recipe online. Okay, yeah. She said you could get it online. Yeah. Any more? Yes. Number one, you should be careful when you said President Roosevelt. We had two. You remember Teddy and FDI. So you, but when you gave his wife's name, I knew it was Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy. We're talking about. Yeah. But you should be careful on that. The other thing is, is thank you from the uh, what I've understood, a lady from Scotland that I knew. Even though the Scots and the English don't like each other, she still drank tea. Uh, she said that you should never use hot water from your, you know, run hot water and use that to put in your right. You should always use cold oh, water start and up. then start it and never, like you say, boil it. Yeah. Just watch. She said that there's just tiny little bubbles. She said, because just like you said, it takes the oxygen out. And she right. said, and then it doesn't taste right. The other thing is, in, she said, 
in England, she said, like over here, you have whole milk, 2%, 1%. They use the whole milk. So that's going to taste different when you put the whole milk in. And, if, right. uh, and I have done it myself in yeah. tea. Just, I like to drink it black myself. I do. But uh, I just taste it, you know. But if you put whole milk in, it's going to taste different than if you put 1% or 2%. It, right. it makes, because there's less uh, butter fat in the milk. Right. So you do get a different uh, taste in your tea. Yes. In fact, if I have water sitting in my tea kettle, I will pour that water out and you always use fresh drawn cold water. And you talk about Teddy Roosevelt, I have a little story about him. <laughs> when he was uh, going hunting with some friends one time, he saw a little cub bear and they told him, shoot him, shoot him, and he wouldn't shoot him. And somebody got a hold of this story that Teddy wouldn't shoot a, a cub. So this man started making teddy bears, and that's how, <laughs> that's what I was told how the name came about, teddy bears. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. And, and, it was, and usually, I'm assuming the woman they had, they had an author who had written a book on Martha Washington, and then they had a historian, so I'm sure that's the format. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. In fact, my daughter, when she was in high school, she had to write a, a, th a thing about the president. And we bought her this book, and Lord and behold, I kept it all these years. And it's a very, very interesting book. It tells uh, quite a bit stories about the presidents. So, yeah. Are there any? Oh, yes. If you are cold, it will warm you. If you are heated, it will cool you. If you are depressed, it will cheer you. Tea drinking is as old as, like I said, as the pyramids of Egypt. So uh, I always enjoy my tea. And the hit, like I said, the history goes way back, way back. And back then, it was only the rich people that um, drank tea because tea was so expensive then. And I have this uh, little uh, uh, tea caddy and it uh, has a key to it. And the people that did have tea in the house years and years, they used to put their tea under lock and key so the servants wouldn't steal the tea because tea was so expensive. And the reason tea was so expensive was because of the Boston Tea Party. It was that the Mohawk, in, uh, there were men dressed as Mohawk Indians, and they came aboard these ships that were docked there, and they dumped over 300 cases of tea into the water. And that's when the tea became so expensive. But everyone enjoys your tea. Your common people, your royalty people, the president, everybody enjoys tea. So I hope uh, you learned something. I hope everybody enjoyed. And I hope everybody enjoyed my um, uh, lavender cookies. <laughs> yeah. 
And my tea, I brought three different types of tea. I brought a peach tea, my holiday tea. I used to always make that holiday tea at the holiday, but everybody seems to like it. They always say, make it, make it. So I also brought raspberry green tea, and I used Dragonwell green tea, which is supposed to be the finest green tea, and I dehydrate raspberries to put in there. So, Oh, my, my molasses cookies, too, I made with the sugar that's on top. So I hope you enjoy the tea and the cookies. Thank you. Thank you for having me.